Have they lost their minds? Well, they probably lost them a long time ago. This is the ownership of the New York Knicks, who seem to be getting rid of the one sensation they had last year. That was point guard phenom Jeremy Lin. Kevin Clark of the Wall Street Journal Sports Desk is here to talk to us about Lin and the business behind Jeremy Lin. Kevin, good yeah. to see you. What's, what's going on? As we stand right now, it's uh, Monday at about 2 p.m. What's happening? Right. So the decision will have to be made a little over 24 hours. And so <clears throat> between now and then, anything could happen. What it looks like right now is the Knicks will not match the Houston Rockets' offer of about a $30 million deal, which would escalate to 15, $14 million a year in two years. Um, and so basically it's just the Knicks have the offer in hand. They're looking at it, and they're deciding if this is a good business deal. Uh, I'd say it's a good business deal simply because Jeremy Lin puts people in seats. Right. He sells television rights, particularly uh, across Asia, which are increasingly more viable, and gives the franchise some buzz that the Knicks have, la have lost for a the greater part of, say, 15 years. Right. The concern is there's sort of a doomsday scenario in the third year in which they have to pay about $50 million in luxury tax, which is the penalty that uh, teams with high payrolls have to pay to the NBA that gets put into the coffers of every team. But on the other end of that, $50 million is not a lot when you look at you know, a Taiwanese television deal or some marketing deals. They had a, they had a deal with a Taiwanese uh, tire company uh, in the latter half of last year because of all the excitement that Jeremy Lin brought. There was an executive, the president of MSG Sports, who spent a long time in the spring just touring China, having different business deals. The infrastructure is there at this point. So the Knicks have to decide whether or not the, the infrastructure can carry them to that $30 million or $40 million difference that they would have to pay if they, if they kept Jeremy Lin. Now, we saw this morning the stock in MSG, that's the parent company that that owns the New York Knicks, I think it was down about 2%. So the market seems to be uh, reacting negatively. But let's talk about Jeremy Lin as a basketball player for a second. Maybe, Kevin, he's just not that good. Right, and he has the, the joke around basketball right now is he has more millions on the table uh, than starts, than career starts. I mean, right. He started 25 games, I think, in his entire career. And so, you know, the sample size isn't there. He hasn't played four years, five years to where you would warrant a $30 million contract. And so, you know, there's so many uh, famous misses that he had in the, la in the latter half of, of his run last year, whether it was against the Heat, whether it was against the uh, the Nets, that teams like the Knicks can look at that and say, wow, maybe he was just a flash in the no, pan. But I'd say the more worrying statistic is the turnover statistic, the highest, single highest turnover rate among 93 point guards for all the NBA, over six turnovers per game over 48 minutes. Right. That seems perhaps the worst thing you want in your point guard, to give the ball away. Yeah, I mean, historically, good point guards have had to give the ball away a lot, but he had some worrying games last year where he, there, there were four and five straight possessions where he couldn't hang on to the ball. I think the biggest issue with Jeremy is that he couldn't play with, with Carmelo Anthony. When Carmelo Anthony came back, Jeremy Lin's uh, average fell, I think, about eight points. And when uh, when Jeremy Lin was hurt later in the season, Carmelo Anthony's average went up 10 points a game. And so you're just looking at these two players cannot play well together. Obviously, the Knicks are invested in Carmelo Anthony. And so can Jeremy Lin be Carmelo Anthony's designated point guard? Probably of, not. Of course, New York's tempestuous fans <laughs> are hearing nothing of this. They've started their own change.org petition. I think it's, it's up to 5,000 names. And if there's anything that we know about uh, Mr. Dolan, James Dolan, the owner of MSG and the Knicks, is that he will pay absolutely no heed to what the fans want. Absolutely. I, it's bizarre. You know, it is one thing I will say about Jim Dolan is that it's bizarre that now is the time he takes a stand. I mean, they were paying tons of luxury tax money when it was Jerome James, when it was uh, Steph Marbury. And now you have a, a phenomenon on your hands, and you're going to start nickel and diming him. Yeah, that's probably a fair point. Right. And so it, it's just very interesting. I think it shows a lot about the kind of person he is as far is, um, you know, when he makes a decision, he's going to stick with it. He doesn't care about, you know, a Taiwanese tire deal. He doesn't care about the deals set up in Asia. He cares about what he wants to do, and it's coming from ownership, and, you know, more power to him. If he wants to run his organization like that, he can. Uh, doesn't it seem, I think we mentioned this before, Kevin, it seems that the business of the NBA has gotten more fun than the actual NBA sport itself. Uh, charting the comings and goings, the strategic decision making, right. assessing the value of given players. In my mind, this, it's really become a sport unto itself. You know, Jason Gare, a wonderful columnist, had a line yesterday. He said the Knicks could sell million dollar front row seats to their offseason. I mean, that's, <laughs> it's really, you know, July 1st to about August 1st is just a crazy time. It's much more interesting than, say, an away game in Milwaukee in December. And so I think that people like. To you know, to, you know, think about what would happen in different scenarios. I think that the the business deals and the money's gotten so big now. There's so many implications. I mean, this one Jeremy Lin deal could ripple throughout not only the entire NBA but the you know some factions of the world economy. Look at Volvo signed a huge endorsement deal with Jeremy Lin. They don't want him in Houston. They world want him economy, in the, you're pushing it there. Well, I, like I mean, it. I mean, endorsements as far as you know. Again, Volvo paid him a lot of money to endorse, right. and they don't want a guy in Houston. They want a guy in Manhattan. Well, perhaps we can deal away with any injury risk and any other problems and just not actually play the game. 
games and just play the off season right. sports. And off seasons and endorsements. That's all the NBA needs. All right. Well, sounds like fun. Kevin Clark from the Wall Street Journal Sports Desk. Thanks for joining us, Kevin.